Well, welcome back. And uh, I want to say hello to all of our gingerbread men and ladies that uh, worked on the previous bundle. Uh, I've seen a lot, a lot of gingerbread houses. You guys did an amazing job. And today we're going to put together a uh, choo-choo train. And that, again, has been a pretty uh, uh, popular request over the last few years. And we're finally bringing it to you. And it doubles as not only a piece of decor, but you can use it as like three different or three separate little gift boxes all connected together like a little choo-choo train. So, okay, so I kind of went through and systematically just kind of figured some things out just to make life easy for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by piecing together the wheels for the... Uh, for cart number two and number three. Obviously we have the main engine, we'll call that number one, and this is for um, cart number two and three. So what you're gonna wanna do is find all of these pieces. There's gonna be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four wheels to a cart, okay? And we've got two carts that are gonna use these wheels. The main engine uses different wheels. So. You're gonna find eight of these red pieces, eight of these green pieces, and eight of these, uh, in our case, gold. Yours may be different colors, but again, find eight of all these, okay? And we're just gonna piece them together, the red layer being the bottommost layer. So we're gonna begin by putting glue on, in my case, the green. Whoops, already making a mess here. And we're gonna pop that right on top of the red. And the reason I'm doing this first is because I wanna give these a good chance to really dry nice and flat because they're gonna be holding up uh, the rest of our, our train. And I want it to be nice and strong and nice and flat so that we can potentially avoid warping Okay, so then we're gonna put this right on here, just like that. We're using like a, a, a brushed gold foil for our top layer, but there's your wheel. Okay, red, green, and then in our case, the gold. And there's wheel number one. Okay, and I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna actually lift this up and put it underneath my mat so it dries nice and flat. Not a whole lot of weight on there, but enough. I'm gonna show you one more here. This is number two of eight. Okay, so again, we're just putting glue on green layer, connecting it to, putting it on top of, I should say, Mr. Red layer here, like that, and then find the actual detailed part of the wheel, in my case, the gold, and we're gonna put that right on top of our green layer. Just make sure you get it nice and centered. Do the best you can. And just press that down flat, and there's number two of eight going under my mat. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys do the rest of these. You should have a total of eight of these when all said and done. So go ahead and finish that up. Finish your eight, and then I will meet you back here for the next step. Okay, so here we have them. We've got four for train car number two, four for train car number three, and again, these are all gonna go underneath my mat while I'm working on the rest of the project. We're gonna let these dry and set nice and flat while we move on to the next thing. Okay, so we have the wheels all put together, just those specific wheels that we just did. Uh, what I want you to do going forward, um, I'm gonna go through and show you all of the different pieces that may go with train car one or the engine one train car two, train car three, and just start making piles. Uh, make a pile for train car one, a pile for train car two, a pile for train car three. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I'm doing that as we go here. Okay, so um, just to get started here, these pieces here, this is the main structure and the, the main platform that the actual car or the engine is gonna sit on. And you'll notice, that we've got some Roman numerals cut into the centers here. One, there's a two there, there's a three there. Start making piles. Okay, this is one, I'm gonna put that up there. This is two, I'm gonna put this up here, and this is three, okay? We're starting with three, so I'm gonna leave this here for now. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the panels on these little platforms, 
Okay, now take a look at all these. And if you want, you can kind of put them next to each other, however you want, okay? Now, obviously, uh, what you want to do is find the ones that are a little bit taller. You can tell that these are thicker and longer, okay? This is going to go to, to the engine one. This is going to go into our one pile, okay? Now, we also have one more that has a hole in it that's just as tall as these. This is going to engine one, okay? Um, there's no fourth panel for it because we've got that little grill that goes on the front. So don't worry about that. <clears throat> now with the pieces that I have left over here, you'll notice that three of them look exactly the same and have a hole in the center. Okay. Two of these are going to go to engine or engine cart number two. So put these in the number two pile. Keep one of these with a hole in it for number three. I'm going to put that right on the number three. I'm putting this right on my number two. Okay. And then obviously that just leaves these pieces here and uh, well, these are a little bit longer. These are a little bit shorter, but longer than this one. Okay. This is the back of train car number three. So that goes with this one, this one here. Now we need to figure out which panel goes on the side of this one and it looks like it's this one here okay because this one is too long this these two really long ones that don't fit on this one these are going to go on train car number two so i'm going to put these on my second pile okay and that just leaves this one here which is going to go right there so um, again we're going to do this systematically and we're just going to get everything done so nothing is confusing and before you know it, we'll have everything assembled. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glue. So let's go ahead and apply this. This is the one with the little hole. We're gonna put our string, twine, really thin ribbon, whatever it is that you're gonna end up connecting these carts with. It's gonna go through this hole. And I'm doing this while it's flat as usual. And this one here, you just wanna line this one up with the existing hole there, get it nice and centered. Okay, and then just make sure that we get the right size here. Okay, so grab the smaller one because this end is a little bit shorter than the two sides. This is the front, this is the back, and then we've got the two sides, obviously. So we just want to make sure that we're getting it in the right spot. So we get that nice and centered there. And then we'll get the other two pieces on. And you'll notice that we actually have some little markers here to help you with the positioning of these. And um, on this piece, you're going to have a little letter T so that you know which one's the top, which one's the bottom, because we also have some markers on here to help you position your wheels accurately so that they're nice and uniform and consistent on both sides. Okay, so just make sure that the way you're looking at it, you can see the letter T and it's not, the T is not upside down and then pop it right into place here where the little markers are and just push that down into place and then rotate this over again. Same thing with this one. Look for the letter T, make sure it's right side up and depending on what kind of paper you have, it may be difficult to see it, um, but it's there. So definitely look for it. It'll help you have a more consistent, and uh, well, a more accurate outcome. Okay, now we've got little triangular tabs here. We wanna fold those in, and we're simply going to glue them to the inside or right behind the neighboring wall, so to speak. So we just bring this, we've got the glue on the tab, bring this down, get it lined up, and give that a press and squeeze. Hold that in place for a second. As long as you didn't put too much glue on there, it shouldn't take long at all. Okay, get that glue. I'm gonna, I'm pressing that glue out to the very edge there. I want it to be nice and crisp and clean. Get that lined up, press it together, hold. There we go. And then next one, work that glue out. Less is more. Get it lined up, press it together, and voila, 
And the last little tab here. Now we're going to put our wheels on later on. I'm not going to get them on right now. I think, uh, you know, actually I don't really think it matters, but I just want to kind of keep things systematic right now. And this makes the most sense to me. So hopefully it does to you as well. Okay, so platform for car number three is all done. So I'm going to put that off to the side for now. And I'm going to bring in the platform for car number two. Now this one's a little more self-explanatory uh, because the sides are obviously longer here and shorter there. So these are going to go on here just like this. These are going to go on the sides. Again, this one has the letter T on it. Make sure it's right side up and that you're using the little guides there. This one also has the letter T on it. Get that in place. This is for train car number two. And then this is for the engine. Okay, again, if you look, you will see the letter F as in Frank on here. Make sure that's right side up. Okay, because we also are going to have some markers on here to help you with the placement of the wheels. So again, just make sure the letter F is right side up. And then this is going on the back right here with a little hole. This side remains empty for now. Okay, so go ahead and get these panels on train car number two and the uh, train or the engine, main engine, the big one's the engine, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm on train car two. I just got the uh, little panels glued down to the sides. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up just like we did with train car number three. We're gonna start by just putting glue on the little triangular tab and then connecting it with the adjacent wall. We'll call it a wall. Okay, and just moving right along, you've got a total of four tabs that we need to do this to. It's pretty straightforward. And I didn't actually, not even having to create an entire box because it's hollow and open from the bottom, which makes it that much easier. So this should be a breeze. Very simple. Okay, and the reason that I cut back in here is because when we put the panels on the platform for the main engine, we gotta make sure we do it in a certain way. Otherwise, it's not gonna work right. And I will explain that here in just one second. Let me get the last one glued in place. Okay, this is our train car number two. And that one is good to go. So we can put that off to the side. Now let's take a look at our main engine piece here. Now obviously this piece with the hole in it, you can see the hole there, that's going right there. And the other side is not gonna have anything on it just yet. We still have to build that piece and we'll get to that. Uh, but the other two pieces, it is important how we put those in place because one side of this is gonna have the little um, hole for the string to connect the other two carts. This is the front. Okay, so this is the back, this is the front. Now, these two pieces are pretty much identical, kind of, they're, but they're kind of flip-flopped, okay? So, okay, so take a look at these two pieces here, and you'll notice that on one of them, it has the letter F is on the left-hand side, and then on the other one, the letter F is on the right-hand side, and it's kind of backwards, okay? So what we wanna do is the one that has the backwards F, as in Frank, okay, that is gonna go, so let's say that the, the back is here, the one with the backward, backwards F, I'm sorry, is going to go on this side here, okay? And the one with the regular F, the one that's actually facing correctly, is going on this side here, okay? So just position it like this so that the hole, the, the panel with the hole is in the back, the letter F that is correct is going on this side closest to you, the one with the F backwards is on the side furthest from you. 
Okay, and it has to do with the placement of the markers because the wheel shapes and the sizes, well the shapes are wheels, but the sizes on the wheels are slightly different. Uh, there's two smaller wheels up in front and one larger wheel in the back. And we've got the alignment and the little markers for the larger wheel. We want those to be on the same side towards the back of the uh, little platform here. And I'm just double checking my work and that is correct. Okay, now I'll go over that one more time real quick just to make sure that that's all clear. After this, it, there's not really gonna be much else that's gonna be confusing. And again, not gonna confuse you because we're gonna get it right the first time. So again, position it like this so that the hole is facing on the left. Okay, and then up here, so the side that's closest to you from, you know, well, the side that's closest to you is gonna have the tab or the panel that has the letter F that is facing correctly. And on the other side, I'm flipping it over now, it has the F that is pointed backwards. So it's a backwards F, okay? So that's that. And just like we did with the other two platforms, we're simply going to get this glued into place by connecting it to the neighboring wall. And we'll have our platforms all together here in just a moment. And then we can start working on the next little section. So take your time, enjoy the process. Put on a little light Christmas music or heavy, whatever you, whether it be Buble, Mariah Carey, I personally am a big fan of either some Vince Guaraldi or some John Williams, maybe some Wyndham Hill, things like that when I craft, just something light and airy, something not too distracting. Okay, and the last little tab here, get your glue on there, work it out to the edge if you can so it's nice and crisp there where the two ends meet and press and hold that together. And there's platform number three, I'm sorry, number one for the engine. Okay, there's one, two, and three. And we've got the panels on. So these are ready to go and these are gonna help kind of define your piles uh, even better uh, so that you know where everything goes. Okay, so as usual, um, I kind of like to lay things out and um, do things systematically. And uh, typically what I'll do is anytime there's vellum, um, I will work on making sure that I get the vellum in place. But in this case, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different because we're actually going to be sandwiching the vellum uh, in between the layers just to kind of keep things um, looking nicer. Uh, in which case, what we can do is start putting together our structures Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do next is, well, we're going to do a little bit of vellum work. Uh, we're going to begin by putting together the main structure here. Okay. So uh, what we did to make things easier. And again, I mentioned, we're going to start kind of backwards. Um, take a look through all of these pieces and you'll notice that on these tabs here, there's some Roman numerals. This is Roman numeral three. This is also Roman numeral three. And so this is piece number one here, or this is the, the bones of this structure. And we're gonna put that together in just a moment. But before we do, um, we're actually gonna put some vellum on this, okay? What you need to do is go through your vellum and you're gonna find, find the pieces that fit, okay? Like for example, this one fits here. Okay, now you're gonna have another piece that looks similar, but obviously it's too tall. You can see that is too tall. And then for um, cart number two, that's too wide, okay? So find the one that fits there, find the one that fits there. And then we're gonna have two squares that are gonna go over the stars. Okay, so find those pieces and we're gonna get those in place. And yes, we're actually going to glue them to the outside because we're gonna sandwich the vellum between this layer and a layer that goes on top of it, which is this layer here. Okay, so we're gonna get our vellum in place first. 
And don't put glue on the vellum. You want to put glue around the area where the vellum is going to sit and then maybe do a little bit of a square around that as well. And just make sure that you uh, make sure that you cover this entire section completely so that well the whole area has vellum on it. Okay, we don't want any of the little cutouts here where there's going to be vellum to not have the vellum and look kind of incomplete. So just make sure that you're getting your glue in the right spot and that you're covering all the cutouts properly. And try to get it as centered as you can because uh, when we put these panels on, um, these are a little bit smaller than the panels, but we want to make sure that they don't stick out here as well. So if you want, what you can do is kind of get an idea how far out you can go with the glue before uh, you're starting to encroach onto the space for the panels. Okay, so just do that very carefully. Get that in place and if you put some glue in a spot where maybe it doesn't need to be, it's fine because the panel is going to cover it up. So don't, don't lose any sleep over that. So I'm just kind of going around the perimeter and then work the interior a little bit. And we'll get, get this guy right in place. Try to center it as best as you can. Make sure that you're covering up all the cutouts and press that into place just like that. Okay. Now this is, again, this is the inside. This is the outside. And I know it's kind of, it's kind of different, but just uh, follow along here. All right. So now we're going to get our panels on here and you can see where that panel goes and you can see where this panel goes. Now all of the, uh, you're not going to get these confused because the main engine has panels that are similar, but you can tell it's way too tall. This is for the main engine. And also the one for car number two are kind of, um, well, they're round. So obviously that's not going to work. So find the ones that fit correctly and we can start getting these glued down. So get your glue onto our little panel here. And work some of that glue along the interior. And you want to make sure is, well, first off, don't put that one there because that doesn't match up. You want to find the one that matches up and just get that nice and centered and keep an eye on all the cutouts. Make sure that you're not obstructing where those cutouts are. And then also try to make sure that it's level uh, horizontally and vertically and that you've got it nice and as centered as you can possibly get it. If it's not completely centered, it's still okay because we left a little bit of uh, a gap there just in case you didn't get it down as accurately as you possibly could have. Okay, now these two pieces here, um, there are two other pieces on cart number two that look similar, but the ones on cart number two have some score marks on them. Okay, so this is for cart number two. You don't want, you don't want to put that here. Okay, even though it might look like it fits, the ones that have score marks, there's two of them, go on to cart number two. The ones without the score marks go on cart number three. Okay, so we're gonna get our glue on the back of this guy, or gal. And we're gonna glue that down. And these two are identical. So again, just make sure that it's nice and centered and that you've got it not obstructing the cutout. Try to keep a nice even border all the way around and just pop that into place, press down, just like that. Okay, and then we'll move over to this one. I'm gonna put the star cutout down first and then we'll put the larger panel down. Just like that. And again, do your best to get that nice and centered. I'm kind of starting off by making sure that I'm lining it up with the cutout and then just kind of nudging it up or down, left or right, just to make sure it's nice and centered, nice even border all the way around. And voila, 
And that's good. And that just leaves this large panel here. And it's gonna go right there. And let's get that in place. So you'll notice that this paper that I'm using, one side, well, it's actually, we're using um, the same piece except we're using different sides. And that's just how, kind of how it worked out when Ron was designing it. He kind of liked both patterns. But on the sides, we're using one side of the paper. And on the front and back, we're using the other side. So um, yours may be a little bit different depending on which pattern you select. So don't get that. Don't let me confuse you because of the fact that we're using the same piece for the sides and the front. Okay, so just make sure that's nice and centered. Make sure you're not obstructing any of the cutouts. Get that glued into place. And that is the main structure here for our car number three. We got the vellum and the panels on. Now, it's just a matter of connecting these together. And now you see how that, it's got, that tab's a little weird, but it's cut out there on purpose so that we don't obstruct that little cutout where we've got the vellum. So go ahead and get your glue on this tab. Work that glue out to the edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and spread that all the way out to the very edges with my finger. And then just do this flat on your surface. Get that lined up nicely, as accurately as you can. Kind of butt it up to that score mark. Don't go over the score mark, just butt it up to the score mark. You should be able to fold it over onto itself, nice and flat, and then these tabs should line up perfectly. They should sit on top of each other nice and flush. Okay, so there we have that. Now, you can see how nicely that fit. Now we can fold these in. We're gonna put glue on this tab now. And get some glue out to the edge, just like we did before. It's up to you if you want to spread that out like I do. It really thins the glue, makes it more tacky, and then it dries a lot faster. And you can actually put this down flat and bring this piece over and just connect it while everything is nice and flat. That should line up perfectly. You can kind of fold it over onto itself and press down. Get that in place. Now, before we actually, before we finish this off, uh, we do have a little bit of trim for the little windows here. Okay, so for this one here, you want to find the piece that looks like this. And we're going to pop that right into place like so. Okay. Try to make it so that all of the little accents and all of the little overlays are unique enough to that specific train car where you won't get it confused with another one. Okay, so get some glue on the back of that, get it nice and lined up with the existing cutouts, and just pop that in the, oh, oh no. This is, uh, this foil, the back of it, <clears throat> doesn't really absorb glue very well, so it's kind of slippery and slides around a little bit. It'll stick, it'll sit nice when it's all done, but if you're using this kind of foil, it's like a brushed foil look. Just be careful that you don't nudge it around too much while it's trying to set. Yeah, the back of this is like plastic almost. Okay, so we'll get this one. You're looking for one that's shaped like this. Just match it up with the existing oval there. Make sure it's nice and centered and just press that down into place. And there we have it. <clears throat> and technically, you know, if you don't even make the train, you could use this as a little gift box on its own which is kind of cool. All right, so now all that's left to do is just close up the bottom. So go ahead and get your glue on the remaining three tabs here, just like that. And I'm gonna, as always, brush that glue out to the very, very edges. You're not really gonna see this because we're gonna end up gluing this onto the actual platform that we just constructed, but I still like to do my best work. Okay, so fold this over and just focus on aligning it with the side opposite of the side that is already hinged, which is this side here. Get that nice and centered, and then run your fingers along the edges on the other two sides. And you can put that down on your surface once you know that 
it's lined up and you can push down from the inside either with your finger. I like to use a dowel sometimes so I don't go crushing or creasing anything. There we go. And take a look at our work. Make sure that everything is making good contact. And there we have it. Okay, so that is, this is the main structure for train car number three. I kind of have a little area here where it's not sitting completely flat. So I just ripped off a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it and just pop it right in between those two layers where it's not completely making contact. Paint a little bit of glue in there and just press that down and hold it for a moment just to get that to sit nice and flat. Okay, there we go. All right, so train car three is done. We still need to make a roof for it, which we're actually, we can go ahead and do now. Um, so we'll put that off to the side. Here's number three. That's where three is going to go. So we'll put that off to the side for now. And what we want to do is we want to find the roof piece for number three. There's a Roman numeral three here. And you'll notice that, uh, well, all of these have Roman numerals. All three of the, the engine and the two cars they all have roofs, and there's Roman numeral one, two, and three. We just need three, but I'm, I'm bringing all these out right now to illustrate something. Um, the little, in our case, the glitter, um, the actual glitter overlay is only gonna go, and is only gonna fit precisely on, uh, well, their respective roof pieces here. So for example, okay, this is the main, this is the main engine. This is number one. That's going to fit on number one. If you try to take this piece and put it here, you'll notice that it doesn't line up with anything. Okay. So that's how you know which piece that's like this goes with which roof piece. So this goes with number one. Okay. I'm going to put that back. That's the main cart. This goes with number two, obviously. I'm going to put that back. And this is the one we need for number three. Okay. So, before we do anything else, we're going to flip this around and we're going to go back to our vellum for just a moment. And we need to find, we need to find the vellum pieces that kind of look like the shapes of the roofs. This one, this just came off the mat kind of weird. So they're kind of, they're kind of um, warped a little bit, but it's fine once we glue them down. Okay. So Look for the pieces that look like this, okay? They're rectangles basically, but rounded. And just find the ones, <clears throat> this one here, I can already tell that this is for train car number two, because if you look, if you put this down inside the roof, it's too large. It doesn't fit within the kind confines of these scored areas here. You can see the scored area here and here. If you try to put this in here, that's not gonna fit, it's too big. This is for train car number two find the other one that is just like that <clears throat> and put that over to the side of number two. And then that leaves just four more that look like rectangles. And you'll notice that they're pretty much identical in size. So four of these are going to be the same. Two are going to go with train car number three. And the other two are going to go with the main engine number one. Okay. So just want to make sure that you understand that. And just like we did before, uh, we're actually going to glue the vellum on top. We're going to sandwich it between these two layers. Okay, so without further ado, let's get our vellum in place. And I can kind of just do a little box first and then get a little bit of glue in the interior and press that down. Make sure you get it as centered as you can. Uh, you know, actually the the overlay piece is going to cover this up entirely. So all you need to worry about is making sure you get it within the confines of the scored areas. Okay. So just don't, don't let it overlap the vellum. Don't let the vellum overlap any of the scored areas and you'll be in good shape. <clears throat> okay. So let's get our glue on this side now, just like that. And pop this into place. Just going to try to work flat whenever possible. Just makes life a lot easier. 
Okay, and that's pretty much where the road ends when it comes to working flat. Now we need to assemble this. You'll notice that we have some little triangular tabs here, and these tabs are gonna get glued to the inside, the underside of this section, this tab here. We're gonna connect them like this, okay, so that it's basically creating a, a little roof. Okay, so go ahead and get your glue on that little triangular tab. And I'm going to make sure that that glue goes right out to the very edge here. Tack it up a little bit and it'll dry a lot faster. Tuck it underneath and just line up this angle with that tab's angle there. And it should just, and then it's, you know, it's gonna be flat, obviously. It's gonna be flush, just like that. And we're just creating a little roof. Okay, so move on over to the other side. Get that center piece nice and glued in place. It's gonna help create the main shape of our roof. And make sure you just get that nice and aligned and everything else will fall into place nicely. Okay, so we got the two sides glued together. Now, we just need to put glue on these two little tabs here on the first side. I think I'm just gonna do one side at a time here. So we'll put glue there, fold this over, line it up, and press that down into place and hold it. Okay, and then we'll go over to this tab here. If you can't see that, I'll show it to you in a second. There it is, yep. Just get some glue on that tab, and then tuck it right behind this piece here and hold that in place. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to the opposite side and do the same thing to close this up, make it one nice solid roof shape. Okay, and fold that over, line it up nicely, press and hold. And last but not least, we've got one more little triangular tab there. Fold that underneath. Get it nice and connected and press and hold. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see what that looks like. Nice little roof piece. And at this point, um, you're gonna wanna find the little overlays that look like this. And you'll notice, because we love you, that on the little part here that folds, there's a little folding tab, we have some Roman numerals. There's a Roman numeral three on this one and there's a Roman numeral three on this one, okay? The rest of these, also, you'll see, this has a Roman numeral two on it. But, of course, that's way too big, which is why we numbered it for you. So find the ones that have the Roman numeral three, and we're actually gonna start by putting these on first, okay? So these need to go on nice and flush onto this piece here, and then you'll also notice that we have little tabs so that this will kind of hug over onto the other side, okay? Your main goal here is to make sure that it is nice and aligned with the shape that already exists there, the, uh, the pitch of our roof, and um, what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna put glue on let me see here. Yeah, we're actually gonna put glue onto this piece here. You don't wanna put it on the green piece because you're gonna end up having glue in some areas that it doesn't belong, and that could be a problem. I'm not gonna put glue on the little side tabs yet. I'm just gonna focus on getting this on correctly, nice and flush, and then we'll worry about the side tabs in a moment. So, of course, you wanna start by making sure that you've got it lined up with the center of the roof. And then, if you need to, you may need to kind of push in the roof on either of the sides to match it with the pitch of this piece. Okay, this piece is what we're aiming for as far as getting the correct pitch and uh, slope pitch. I'm not a contractor, so I don't, I'm not sure I'm using the terminology correctly, but just get it on there. Make sure that it's nice and lined up with the shape and angle of 
the green structure that we just put together. Okay, there we go. So we got that on there. Now when the face is on, you can fold this over and on that little area that's folded, it's kind of like a tab, you can put some glue on there and then fold that over onto the structure that's right next to it, the side of the roof, and just hold that in place for a moment. And then move on over to this side, get your tab on there. That's fine. And just fold that right over. Okay, so you see what that looks like. That's very nice, looks pretty precise. I'm happy with that. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side here. Okay, so let's get our glue on this piece. Don't worry about putting glue on the tabs just yet. You wanna focus on this first. Okay, let's get that centered with the center of the roof first and foremost, and then make sure that the rest of it on the left and the right lines up nicely with the angle that's already there on the roof that we created. And then just give that a kind of a pinch to get that in place. That looks good. And then we can fold this little tab over and then get that glued onto the side there. Okay. And then we'll go over on this side, throw a little glue on there and fold that over onto the side. And the reason for that is just to kind of uh, make sure that there's no little green gap in there. We want to, wanted to create some continuity and make sure that everything looks nice and polished. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that when we're putting this roof on, and actually it looks like it's symmetrical, so you really can't mess it up regardless of which way you put this on. Yep, that's, that's accurate. Okay, so you can see how that's gonna go on. Okay, and what I would do is I would focus on just gluing down the center part. We'll worry about the, these parts, the little icicles, um, after we get the main part of this on there. So go ahead and get your glue on the main part of the roof here. Don't worry about the little icicle section. So basically don't go beyond the little score marks on the outer edge of this piece. Get your glue on there nicely. Try not to get too close to where the cutouts are for the, for the vellum, okay? And I would start by placing it where the score mark is, right on the center of the roof. It's kind of gonna guide you. Make sure it's centered and then just slowly, just press that down into place. Make sure it's centered. Make sure it's nice and aligned down there. Just hold that down. And if we need to, we can always go in and kind of clean some things up here and there, but just be patient while that sets. In my case, it may take a little bit longer because I'm dealing with, uh, this is a, you know, a white glitter, obviously. So just be patient. Okay, there we go. And then we can fold this back and we get our glue on these little icicles. Work that glue out to the very edge of the icicles on the left and the right, just to make sure that those sit nice. And you probably don't even need to bring the glue all the way down because not all of these little icicles actually sit on the paper. Some of them kind of go off of the edge. Uh, and now I'm gluing glitter on glitter. So I need to be a little more patient here while that sets. But the whole idea is just to get these to sit nice and flush against that roof line. And I am gonna have to hold this in place for a few extra moments because again, glitter on glitter, it's almost like trying to glue plastic on the plastic. Um, so bear with me here a second. I wanna make sure that I do a good job. Okay, and then we're gonna flip this over to the other side and do the same thing. Get our glue on the little snow drift slash icicle section. And we're gonna pop that down into place. And again, I'm gonna to have to be a little extra patient here with the areas where I've got the glitter going on glitter so that it really holds. But you can see what the end result is supposed to look like, okay? And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold these down for probably a minute so that they all really adhere, okay? And Voila, 
and that should go right on there very nicely. Okay, so train car three is pretty much done. We just got to put the wheels on it and uh, we can move right on to train car number two. Okay, so train car three is all set. And now we're gonna go on to train car number two. So remember we have the platform for number two all done. And just like we did with number three, we're gonna find the pieces that make up the bones of our train car. Okay, and you can see here on the bottom of this tab, there's a two. Um, this one doesn't have a numeral on it, but you can see the shape is just like this one. And it's got this long piece built into it. And then you'll notice that there's a, a Roman numeral two there and a Roman numeral two there as well. Okay, so we're gonna put these together and it's a little bit different because this one does have uh, a little bit of dimension to it, or not dimension, but um, it's more angular because it's round. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. I think I'm gonna start with this one. It's gonna have a tab, long tab built into it. And, um, well, let me figure this out here. These are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you pick, but we need to I'm gonna start here. You'll see that it kind of is round and then it goes straight, okay? So it's gonna go like this. This tab is gonna bend back a little bit. Okay, and it's gonna go on like that. And now we're not gonna put the vellum on first because, um, well, if we do that, it's gonna dry flat and then when we try to curve it and bend it, it's gonna get all wonky on us. So we're gonna start off by, we're gonna glue this tab here to the straight area there that's not curved. So we'll start there. That'll kind of be our little anchor and it'll set the tone for the rest of this project or this section, I should say. So all you wanna do is just get that lined up with that straight piece there, the straight part of the side of our train car number two. And just make sure that it's nice and flush right there. And nice and lined up, of course. There we go. Okay, so I think the best way to do this is we're just gonna get our glue on all of these tabs. They're very tiny. Just put a couple dots of glue. Make sure you cover the entire tab. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kinda hit that with my finger and kinda dab it. And then just from this side here, just kinda connect it and line it up with the main structure here. You'll notice that the structure isn't completely round. It is kind of uh, jagged. So you should pretty easily be able to get that lined up nicely, just like I did there. Okay, so we're just connecting it like that. All right, and make sure that that bottom piece has a moment to set completely before we move on here. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna grab the other side and do the same exact thing. We're gonna connect this piece here. So let's get our glue onto the largest tab here, right up at the top. Kind of dab that a little bit and just get that nice and lined up with this section here. Make sure it's nice and flush at the top there, just like that. Just get it, get it on there as accurately as you can, as close as you can. Okay, and then again, just a dot of glue on each of these tabs, they're pretty small. And then I'm gonna hit them with my finger, kind of flatten that glue out a little bit, get it out to the very edges, and then that's gonna make it a little tackier, and it's gonna dry and set a lot quicker. And then just start with the tab closest to the tab that we already have glued in, or glued down, and just kind of follow the natural curve of this piece that we're connecting it to. Make sure those tabs are nice and flush there. And there we go. It's pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. And you can put that down on your surface, press down from the inside, get a little more pressure on there, and voila. Okay, so now, 
just need to close this up and we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to start with this large tab here. Get our glue on that. Grab this piece and line that up as accurately as you can. Just like that. And press and hold that in place. Let that set completely. All right, and we can move this out of the way for a moment while we get our glue on the remaining tiny little tabs here. Just doing like one dot. And if I don't get enough on that first one, maybe just one more little dab of ink, ink, glue, sorry. And again, just kind of follow the little ang angles there on the side of this piece. And you'll notice that I kind of, you know, when I dab that glue, you can put your finger through the door here if it helps. When I dab that glue, it really thins it out and it makes it so that when I'm gluing this to the structure, I don't have to sit there and wait forever. I kind of just press it with my finger from the inside right there, I'm pressing down here like that. And it sticks pretty much right away. It may not be completely set right away, but it's holding on nice and tight. Okay, so that just leaves this side here. Get it on the large tab there. Let's just get that anchor in place. And actually, you know what? Uh, because we're not going to be able to move this, I'm going to do the rest of these. And I'm just going to go try to be nice and efficient when doing this. But this part here, you just want to make sure that you get it lined up accurately. And then again, you can stick your finger there through the little door. And work on getting the rest of these connected, following that natural curve there until you get to that bottom one. There we go. And voila. Okay, so there's our structure. Now, you don't really want to put this on your table or press down on it because of the peak of the roof there. You don't want to injure it, so to speak. But get these tabs all lined up. Get your glue on these tabs. Throw a little bit of extra as you're putting your glue on, a little bit extra out to the very edges. I'm painting that glue out to the very edges here. And then go ahead and close up the bottom so that this thing is nice and stable. Again, focus on lining up the side opposite of the side that has the hinge. Okay, get that nice and aligned. Run your fingers along the other two sides. Give that a nudge in or out if necessary, and then you can put that down on your surface. Grab your dowel or just pop your finger in there. I like the dowel. It's kind of an extension of my finger. And press those tabs down. Get that to stick, and there we have it. Okay, so there is uh, pretty good. I It's really dry right now, so my glue is not holding as well as it should be. I'm grabbing my scrap piece of paper. You can see that that's really not holding at all. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit of glue right onto this little area. And I'm just gonna press that down and hold that down until it's completely set. So car number two structure is all but done here. Uh, We'll go ahead and again, just like we did before, uh, we gotta find the vellum pieces for this. Now, of course, this one's gonna be a lot easier because of its shape. So you wanna find this piece for this side, and then you're gonna have actually two pieces like this, one for this side, one for the other side, okay? And then for the stars, just find the ones that are, are almost squares, okay? So you need two of these, one for each side. So let's get our vellum on this. And again, when you're putting your glue down for your vellum, don't go all the way out to the edge because we do have a panel that's going on this. And we wanna make sure that there's a little bit of a border on the outer edge of that panel, on, actually on the outer edge of this entire piece once we get that, that panel on there. So just center it the best you can. Make sure that you are 
covering up all of the little cutouts. Once you have it in place, you can put it down on your surface and press down from the inside so you don't risk warping this piece. Okay, so let's take a look at that, and there we go, that's fine. Now we'll flip it over, get the other piece in place. Just again, don't, don't get the glue out all the way to the edge. You wanna keep it away from the edge, but definitely get it to the outside and then work the interior here, like that. Maybe a little bit more up there. Find the other piece, pop it on there, make sure it's nice and centered. Make sure that you're covering up all the cutouts and that you're not getting too close to the edge. So then pop that down on your surface, press down, and there we go. Now I'm actually going to put my panels on too. So um, find the panels that fit our train car number two. There's two of them. You can see that they're nice and round on the sides and each side is gonna be a little bit different. One side has a door and one side has like these double circular windows. So you wanna make sure that you put the correct one in the correct place. This one is the side with the two circular windows. Okay, let's get our glue on this. Keep them away from the little cutouts for the vellum. You can get pretty close, but don't, don't encroach on it too much. And just get that kind of centered. Position it in a way where you've got an, enough light coming through so you can really see the contours of where the, you know, the cutouts are. And once you have it in place, put it down on your surface, press down from the inside. It'll keep this thing nice and straight. I'm not going to warp it at all. Okay, there we have it. And that was pretty good. I've got a little area there that maybe didn't get enough glue out to the edge, and it's kind of peeling back. I've got a little bit of, little bit of glue right there on a scrap piece of paper, just kind of painting it in between the two layers, and then I'll press that down and hold that little area that just needed a little extra love until it's fully set. Now, you know, if you're not planning on using this as a gift box, you could technically put the vellum on the inside. Um, we're sandwiching it just to kind of make it look more pretty from the inside in case we do decide that we want to use this as uh, a gift box of some sort. Okay. All right, so flipping it over to the other side, we'll get the other panel on. I'm kind of working backwards here or flip-flopping around, but I, I think you... I think you understand where we're going with this because I still have two more pieces of vellum to put on the little sides with the stars, but that's okay. I'm kind of not going out of order by any means. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, but anyway. All right, so match that up with the cutouts. Also, make sure that you've got a nice even border going all the way around. And once you have it set, put that down on your surface and you can, either, you can also even use a dowel and just kind of roll it to add the pressure to get that to stick. Just be careful if you don't want to get your fingers in there. And then of course we gotta kind of work in that little area where we've got that little bulge. Make sure that that's sitting nice and flush and it is, okay? So there we go, two sides done. Now we're gonna put the vellum on the little star, around the star, I should say. So let's get our glue. Oh, the glue decided that it wanted to really come out and play now. Kind of coming out heavy, that's okay. <clears throat> and just make sure that you get it nice and covered completely so that the whole area there is covered by the vellum. Okay, just like that. Go over to the other side. Let me clean this thing off real quick. There we go. And just draw a little box there. And grab your vellum piece. Make sure that you've got it completely covering up the star. And just lay it on there nicely. Just like that. There we go. Okay. All right, so that one's kind of sideways, but that's okay. Uh, no big deal because we're gonna be covering it up with a panel. 
Now, remember we talked about this earlier. Um, train car number two has these stars, but it also has a little score mark and a, uh, a little a long rectangle. Okay, and that's gonna go like this. There's gonna be a little bit of a border there. So I think the best thing to do is to start by anchoring this with this long rectangu rectangular piece right up to right up to the score mark there. Okay, so let's get that let's get that in place first. We want to kind of take the where it's folded and line that up with the fold that already exists there, so that they're kind of sitting. The score lines are the score lines on the panel are sitting on top of the score lines from the structure. Make sure it's centered. Press and hold that down, and then before we even glue anything, let's just kind of fold that down and make sure that it's sitting over the uh, little cutout where the vellum is correctly, and it looks like it's great, perfectly positioned. So we've got this anchored now, and we can go ahead, and I'm gonna make sure that I put enough glue at the bottom here, because I want this bottom part to sit completely flush, and then just a little bit of glue around that area. I'm gonna spread that out all the way to the bottom, and I'm just gonna start at the top here, and kind of roll it on down until we get to the bottom. Just hold that in place and let that set. Okay, so moving on to the other side here and I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna start with this little tabbed area first. Get your glue on there and then work a little bit of glue out to the very edge so that sits nice and flush. Okay, and again, take the where it's folded and line that up with the fold on the main structure. So it's kind of, they're sitting on top of each other. And then press down and hold that in place. Make sure that that's lined up nicely. It is. Give that a second to set. And I've got a little bit of an area here that's also peeling up. So I'm gonna fix that in just a moment. I'll show you that process. Nothing new. Same little process where I just kind of paint some glue in there, but get our glue out to the very bottom there. Let's spread that out. There we go. And again, just kind of starting from the top and just kind of caressing it down to the bottom, making sure that it's making good contact all the way down. The main structure for car number two is done. So whatever vellum we have left, that's shaped like this obviously is gonna go over to our main engine number one. And now we just need to build a roof for this guy. Okay, so and there's platform number two, car number two, just put that off to the side. And we need to make a roof. So find roof number two. And then you're gonna have two pieces that look like this. And if you look at the score marks, you'll see Roman numeral two Roman numeral two, and of course, we talked about this before, the roof only fits this, uh, I'm sorry, this piece here for the roof only fits one of these roofs, and it should work either way, and it does, so we've got that piece, and oh, you know what, before I forgot, before I forget, let's bring this back, and let's get our little overlays for our windows in place. We've got two of these circular ones for the one side, and then we've got a main window for the other side. Or is that a door? That's a window. Okay, so get your glue on there. And just get that nice and centered. Make sure that this little tip here is pointing straight down. Well, actually, just focus on getting it lined up with both circles. As long as you've got both circles in place, it should be at the correct orientation, just like that. I might need to give that a little bit of a nudge to the left. There we go. I didn't think that's good. All right, let's grab the other one. Again, this I'm using a, this is a gold foil. It's kind of like a brushed gold foil. The back of it is essentially <laughs> plastic. It doesn't even feel like paper. And it does slip and slide around a lot. So if you're using the same paper, be patient with this and let it really it really set before you move on. And of course, this one doesn't want to slide around as much. Okay, that looks nice. There we go. And we'll flip it over, 
And that looks like a door, but I think it's a window. No, that's a door. I think. Yeah, well, I think it's a door. Okay. We'll get our glue on this piece here, and then we can move on to the roof. And then, uh, again, now we're starting to have less and less pieces. And how how's yours going? Hopefully yours is coming along as well as mine. Okay, so just line that up with the little cutouts there. Just like that. There we go. Beautiful. I love the gold and red. They just work well. So well together, it's just kind of uh, your quintessential Christmas colors. Very nice. Okay, we can put that back. Sorry, I forgot about that. <clears throat> and onto the roof, um, just like we did before, you're gonna wanna find, find the two uh, rectangular pieces, but these are a little bit wider than they were for um, side number three, as well as side number one, you can see that this one's a little bit thicker, okay? So they're both about the same length, but the width for cart number two, it's a little bit wider. And let's see here. I've got one that's kind of ripped. So I'm gonna see if I can actually still utilize this without having to recut it. Um, see if I can place it in a way where the rip doesn't even matter. And there you go, I figured it out. So if I have it up here, the rip sits right on top of the star. But if I put it over here, you don't even see the rip. It's not gonna show through in that little area where it's positioned. So I can use this. I don't even need to recut it, okay? And again, remember I mentioned this, you can put this on the inside if you want. If you want, it's up to you, okay? So if you're watching this video at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, just for the sake of doing it, just so I can illustrate it, I'm just gonna do it, okay? Because I wanna show you that it doesn't really matter if you put this on the inside or outside. Um, it all depends on how, how you want your final presentation to be. If you want it to look more polished, then I would put the vellum on the outside of the roof so that you can sandwich it and hide it completely. Otherwise, if you're not really too concerned about how the uh, inside looks, then you can by all means put the vellum on the inside. Now you see that little piece there that's ripped. I just gotta throw a little dot of glue there. Press that down and you'll notice from this side, you can't tell that there's a rip there because it's not showing through. Okay, so that's all that's all good stuff there. All right, let's get the let's get the vellum on the other side here. And technically if you don't care about the inside and how it looks, you can get a little bit crazier with the glue even. And let's pop that in place. So again, I'm just kind of illustrating that you can do this in multiple ways. There's no right or wrong way. But there's our, there's our vellum in place now, okay? And just like we did with train car number three, we're gonna assemble the roof first. We got this little tab here, okay? And then we've got a tab on the other side. So let's get our glue right on that tab, work it out to the very, edge there and just get that tuck that in line it up nicely with the other side make sure that you get that angle right okay Ooh. and then move on over to the other side here and just get some glue on the other triangular tab that's on the other side I'm just going to dab that glue out to the edge let me see if I can get a, get a better angle at it here. There we go. Beautiful. And just tuck that under. And we're gonna connect that tab to the inside of the opposite, the piece that's opposite of this one. Okay, so the centers on both sides are glued down. And now we just need to um, kind of put the end caps on here. We've got two tabs, one on each side. And you know what, they're so small. I think on the first one, I just, I did one at a time, but I think we can, we can knock this out in one fell swoop here. So I've got glue on both tabs here. You can do one at a time if you want. I'm just gonna do both. Get that lined up, give that a press. Go to the other side, get that lined up, give it a press. Just 
make sure that it's nice and aligned. There we go. And then we can move that out of the way. We've got two more little triangular tabs here. Give that a press. In just a second here, get your glue on there first, obviously. And fold that over on top of that tab, line it up nicely. And press. And then the same with the other side, get that tab behind this piece here and press that into place. Okay, so there we it. There it is. Roof is constructed just like we did the first time. Now remember, this is piece number two, roof number two for cart number two. You wanna make sure that you find the, uh, in this case, these are the pieces that have the little icicles or snow drifts, whatever you wanna call them. Make sure that it says number two on the little tab here. And I've already folded this, obviously. Okay, so this is gonna go in place right here, just like so. Okay, you wanna just make sure that you line that up nicely with uh, the existing edge here. And just get that into place. Don't worry about putting glue on these two little tabs here just yet. We'll do that after. Let's focus on getting the face of this on first. Get that glue out to the edges too, if you can. And I wouldn't go all the way down on these little snow drifts slash icicles because some of those are not even touching this green piece. So I'd go down about three quarters of the way. And again, just make sure that you get it nice and lined up with the angle of the existing roof here. Most importantly, just make sure that the center is nice and centered. And then just run your finger along the very edges here. Okay. All right, so let's get our glue on this piece here. And work it down a little bit onto the little snow drifts, but not all the way down to the edge. You don't need them all the way down there. Okay, again, let's get that lined up with the corner there, top of the roof. Make sure that that is aligned nicely. There we go, and then just kind of run your finger down the rest of the sides here. Make sure that it's lining up as accurately as possible. <clears throat> nice and flush all the way down. This tab should fold over nicely without much resistance at all. There we go, nice, okay. So we got that piece on. Now we can go ahead and glue these little tabs in place. So you don't need to bring the glue all the way down, just kind of halfway, okay? And just fold that over onto that side and just press that down. Same thing on this side, just about up to the point where this green stops. You don't need to go below where that green piece e is, ease. <laughs> Okay, and just press that and hold that down into place. So you've got your tabs on now. And again, as I mentioned the first time, it's kind of just, just to kind of create a continuity with the roof so that everything kind of looks kind of, you know, seamless and all one piece and there's not too many gaps and stuff like that. So. so get your other tab on and then we've got one more to put down and then we can actually put the the actual snow covered roof on this main structure. And we've got two of the three parts of our train done. And that just leaves the main engine. Okay, so there we have it. Now, just like we did last time, we're going to kind of start in the center and just kind of lay it down just like that. And then we'll worry about gluing the little snowdrift icicle section down last. Okay, but let's get our glue on this entire piece here. And then I would focus and make sure that you get enough glue out to the very edges here on the sides. I'm not really too worried about the bottoms because ultimately we're gonna be gluing the little snowdrifts down, but down right here along the edges, make sure you get a, a little extra glue there and then if you can, kind of work that glue out 
to the very edges as well. It'll sit nice and flush for us. Okay, so again, kind of line, line it up in that little, uh, that area that's already creased, match it up with the very peak of the roof, and then just work your way down and press down along the very sides here. Make sure it's making good contact right here where my two fingers are going down like that. Okay. And of course you want to press in the center too, make sure that that's sitting nice and flat, but this is where we want to kind of focus things right now. And that looks pretty darn good. Okay. Got a little glue in my hand there. Okay, so you can see how that is sitting nice. And see if there's any little areas that maybe aren't sitting down. Just give them a press. We got that glue out to the edges, so it should be sitting nicely. Okay, so now you can take our little snow drift, peel it back, apply your glue. Don't go all the way down to the very bottom because some of those aren't even touching this green part that we're gluing it to. But the little end caps here, you do want to get your glue all the way out to the bottom and the edge. So that looks nice and seamless. And then you can fold this up and press down. And then again, make sure that these little corners meet up nicely. And again, I'm going glitter on glitter. So I'm gonna have to hold this for a moment. I'm probably gonna end up cutting and um, skipping uh, to the next part here. So you don't have to sit here and watch this dry. So. Um, but yeah, all that's left to do with this roof now is just go to the other side here and just glue down the same little snow drift section that I'm holding down here and I'm being very patient with, okay? So once that's done, we've got car number three, car number two, the roof, um, all the above kind of ready to go. And we're just left with our main engine. And you can kind of see why I did it in the order that I did because things are kind of familiar. Uh, the second time around when you make car number two. Uh, car number two is a little bit more challenging because of the shape, but not bad at all. And you know, the roof, all the roofs for all three uh, cars are, the assembly is pretty much the same. It's just the, the main structure that is slightly different in some parts. So. You should be pretty much a pro at this at this point as far as the roofs go. Okay, so I'm gonna keep holding this, this little section here where I've got the glitter on glitter. I'm gonna let that set and um, we'll be done with that. We'll do a couple more things um, that are kind of easy just to kind of get that out of the way and then we'll start assembling the main engine here in just a moment. All right, so train car three. Train car two, pretty much done. Now, you know what we can do? Let me just get this done now. Um, might as well before things get too crazy. Um, so, you wanna keep in mind that train car three has one hole here so that we can connect this one to train car two, okay? And what we wanna do is just make sure that um, the side facing you has the little window the side opposite of you has the smaller window and the front and back have the stars, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna glue this down and get this in place. So I'm gonna just flip this upside down, get the bottom here so I can see it and apply my glue to the entire bottom like that. And then I wanna focus a little bit more glue around the perimeter and I'm gonna paint that out to the very edge so that it sits nice and flush all the way around. I'm not seeing a gap underneath it because I'm not sure I would trust a train where the actual area that I sit is flying off the, the structure, okay? And get that nice and centered onto your platform. Make sure you have a nice even border going all the way around. Kind of take a look at it from an eagle eye perspective. And just hold that in place for a moment, let it set. And again, we already have our roof done. It kind of just sits on there nicely. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. Okay. All right, so that's done. And we just need to put some wheels on this, but we'll do that. We'll do that at the end. OK, 
Okay, and then train car two. Again, just flip her upside down. Get your glue on here. And with this one here, you want this door facing you, okay? And this really doesn't matter because you've got holes on both sides. So that's fine. So the door's facing you, the two windows are away from you. And again, just make sure that you get that nice and centered on your platform. Make sure you have pretty much an even border going all the way around on all sides. If it's off by a smidge, you're not really gonna notice it. And just press that down into place. Again, we've already got the roof done. Okay, so that's gonna sit on there nicely. And okay, so that's that. It's all glued down to the platform now. You can put that off to the side while we begin construction on our main engine here. Okay, so we're on to the main engine here. And uh, before we actually put together the main structure of it, uh, of course, this has some wheels too. And kind of like we did with the first two cars, we've got red, green, and then the little panel that goes on the front. So we wanna glue the green to the red, just like we did before. Okay. And get that right in there, nice and centered. So we have that nice little red dot in the center there. And then we'll take our gold piece here and get that glued down. And I'm just gonna hit the spokes with maybe just one little dot tiny, tiny little dot of glue. And just do your best to get that nice and centered. And there we go, press that down. And the same thing on the next one here. Okay, we'll glue that down to the red. Get it nice and centered. And press that down. The glue bottle is really caking up here. And just a tiny little dot on the spokes and maybe just two tiny little ones in the center. Get that lined up. And voila, press that down. Again, I'm gonna put these underneath my mat so that they can dry nice and flat. And then we've got the main little wheels here. There's two of them, one for each side, obviously. And um, these are gonna sit right on top of each other. Um, you want the, you know, you want the green on top of the red. The red is more just structural, just to keep it consistent as far as the three layers go because it's gonna be bearing a little bit of weight and three layers is better than one or two layers. So kind of keep this thing nice and strong. So just lay your green layer on top of the red. Just match it up. Looks like a little barbell, like a weight. And press that down. And then we'll take our gold piece and get that in place. That's gonna go right on top. And then we have, I don't know the anatomy of a train, so I don't know what all these pieces are called, but uh, I'm gonna make up some names. <laughs> okay, so that goes there. And then this little doohickey, the little thingy that moves around, that kinda is connected to the two wheels. That's gonna go right on top and this is getting glued onto, um, well, this is getting glued onto foil. So I need to be extremely patient with this and make sure that it sets nicely for me. But I wanna make sure that the little circular parts are nice and centered right there on the wheel there. And there you go. So I'm gonna pop this underneath my mat again. Let that dry nice and flat. And then we're gonna repeat the same process here. Again, make sure you're putting the green on top of the red because we want the green to show through um, 
on the little gold part there. Okay, so let's get that on there. Just like that. And there we go. <clears throat> and then the gold goes on next. And then that little red piece, the chugga chugga piece. I don't know what it's called. I bet we've got some people that either love trains and I know there's a lot of people that go out and see like old trains. Occasionally they bring them out and they, you can take pictures of them as they're going down the tracks. And I'm sure that some of you out there know the correct terms for all of these. So if you do, <clears throat> leave them in the comments. I'd love to learn more about this. I'm always trying to learn something every day okay so again just make sure that that the little oval parts of this little doohickey are nice and centered on the actual wheels just like that press that down and there's the other one putting that underneath my mat letting that dry flat now you're going to end up with one more piece that looks like it should go on a wheel but this is actually going to go on the front of uh, our main engine okay so don't worry about that right now all right, so um, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put together the uh, main structure for our engine, which is this guy here, okay? And just through process of elimination, we only have these pieces of vellum left, okay? These two, these rectangular ones, are gonna be for the roof. This one here, obviously, um, well, they only go in certain spots. It's pretty easy to figure out what's going to go where. Okay, this door actually is going to be open because we need to be able to get into um, the main engine. Well, somebody needs to drive it, obviously. And as I mentioned before, um, if you want it to look polished, then I would sandwich the vellum between the outside and... Uh, is this the same piece? Yeah, these are the same pieces. I'd sandwich it between the main structure and the panel, okay? But if you don't care what the inside looks like, you can certainly put the, uh, put the vellum piece inside. It doesn't matter either way. So I'm gonna do one of each just to illustrate that you can do either or, okay? It all depends on how you want your final product to look. If you don't wanna see the vellum, then you're gonna to want to sandwich it. If you don't care, because if it's gonna be a piece of decor that you're not gifting, then you can absolutely do it on the inside. Okay, so there's the first piece. And that's going on the inside for me, for this one. And then for this one here, I'm gonna do this one on the outside. It doesn't really matter. Again, it's all up to you and how you want this thing to look when all is said and done. The end result from the outside is gonna look the same. Uh, it may just you know, not look as polished from the inside if you don't sandwich it. All this talking about sandwiches, <clears throat> making me hungry. Okay, and then this one I'm gonna do from the inside just to show you that you can do it that way. And then when we're done putting it together, you'll see what the difference is and how it looks. Okay, so again, it's up to you. Up to you what you really want to do. Okay, and with this, again, just make sure that you're not, cur you're not covering up the door. The door does not have vellum going over it, but the other elements around the door do. Okay, so you can see. Again, um, whichever way you want to do it is up to you. All right, now while this is still flat, I'm going to put my panels on because this one does not have any sort of a bend like train car number two did, so we don't have to worry about uh, anything getting warped or whatnot. So let's go ahead and apply our glue to, now wait a second here. Yep, that's right. Okay, let's get our glue on this one here. And we'll pop this into place. Just like that. And just make sure that you line it up so that you're not obstructing the cutouts, but also 
make sure that you've got a nice even border. The white border is showing all the way around. Okay, I got it as perfect as I can. Probably could have done a little better, but I'm happy with it. Okay. Okay, so there's that panel. And because we're on the last piece here, uh, we don't have to worry about trying to identify any of the panels. Everything that's left over is basically for our, our main engine number one. Okay, so let's get our glue on the back of this guy. Maybe a little bit there. There we go. And just line that up nicely. Make sure you're not obstructing the cutouts and even border all the way around. I gotta scoot that up a little bit. There we go. That looks better. There we go, beautiful. Good job, Leo. You're doing all right. Okay, there we go. And then we've got one more piece here. And that, actually we got two more pieces. <clears throat> this guy's going here. Okay, just like that. So the sides have a different pattern than the front and the back. And that's how, that's how Ron designed it. And that's what we're going with. Yours can have the same pattern or different patterns like we have, whatever you want to do. Totally up to you. Okay, and we'll pop that into place. Just make sure again, that you're not obstructing the cutouts. Nice even border all the way around. Nice and aligned. That looks good. I think, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> okay, just push that down flat. And then we've got one more panel here. This is where the actual engine engine is gonna go. And there's gonna be a little bit of a white border on the inside, very, very tiny. Okay, but you wanna make sure that you keep a little bit of a border on the inside as well. So center it so that you see that even border around this almost hexagon shape. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Let me just get this on. Okay, just pop that into place. There's no little vellum pieces to worry about here, but kind of nudge that a little bit left or right just to make sure that you can see here, hopefully, you can see that there's a tiny little hairline border in white going all the way around. And you know what, even if, if you don't get it completely perfect, it's not the end of the world. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to show you again um, the difference. So here we have the vellum sandwiched, and you can see the inside looks nice and clean. Here we put the vellum on the inside, and you can see the vellum. Okay, and then this one you can see the vellum too. So it's up to you how you want to do it. No right or wrong way, it depends on how you want the presentation to be. Now while we have this flat, let's find the little overlays for our little windows. Okay, and let's get those in place. And then we can go ahead and glue this together and begin working on the engine part. And then we just need to make a roof. And before you know it, We'll be done. Okay, so this is going like this. Just follow the little T in the window. Get that nice and centered there. Press that down into place. I gotta make sure not to nudge it after I get it in place. We've got this little piece here that goes over the door like that. <clears throat> it's a pretty thin little piece here, so you wanna be careful that you don't overdo it on the glue here. A little bit goes a long way. It's a very fragile piece. Don't need a lot to hold it in place. Okay, and obviously there's a little hole here. You can see the little hole there. Match that up with the hole right above the door. And then the rest of it should kind of just fall into place as well. There we go. And yeah, that's, it's open so you can get in there. Again, someone's got to drive that thing, right? Oops. And the last little overlay piece for the other window. Get your glue on there. And 
let's pop that into place. And then we can build this thing. Like that, there we go. Okay, it's looking really cute. All right, so we're gonna join these two pieces together now. And you can see this little odd shaped tab, the cutouts there are to, so that they don't, they don't obscure or obstruct, I should say, the little cutouts for the vellum there on the piece that we're gonna join it to. Get that glue out to the very edges here and just work flat. Get that lined up nicely. There we go, press that down. Hold that for a second, and then you can fold it over onto itself. And these tabs should kind of sit right on top of each other. There we go. Kind of nudged it a little bit, and it was off by just a hair. So I fixed that. And then we're gonna close this up by putting glue on this tab here. There we go. Let's get that glue out to the edges. And press that down. Fold it over onto itself. Make sure it's nice and aligned. There we go. Press, you can kind of grab it, pick it up, fold it onto itself, and press down right on that edge. Okay. There we go, great. Okay, I'm gonna push these tabs down. All right, so most of the structure's done now. Uh, what we wanna do is grab our, grab the main steam engine part of it, which is this guy here. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take these tabs that are um, closest to this part here and we're gonna glue these tabs down to start kind of forming this shape. So let's start with these ta this tab here. Just pick one tab, either side, opposite, or not opposite, next to this shape here. And bring it in and just connect it, line it up and press and hold. Give that a second to set. And I actually, since this is a white core paper, after it's cut and scored, you can see some of that white showing. I may actually hit this with some ink to kind of hide that a little bit. All right, so we can pull this next tab out, get our glue on this next tab here, and just tuck it under and get that glued into place. Okay. All right, we can peel this piece back. We've got one more little tab here to connect. Gonna dab that, thin it out. Oh, this is actually a tab here. I didn't fold it. And just tuck that in right behind the face of this piece. Press and hold for a second. Let that set. And actually, you know what? I'm not gonna ink this because we've got some overlays that are gonna go on that and kind of hide everything. So never mind. All right, we'll get some glue on this next tab. Opposite side now. Working on the opposite side, tuck that in and under, line it up, press and hold. There we go. Fold that out, get your glue on the next one. And tuck that under, line it up, press and hold. There we go. And the last one. A little too much glue there. That's why I like to kind of hit it with my finger, just in case. I don't want to sit there and wait for the glue to dry for an hour. And there we go. Okay, so that's that. I got a tab here that I forgot to fold as well. So these three tabs here, these are ultimately going to get um, glued to another piece that's going to kind of join everything together. But before we do that, um, so we're actually going to join these two sections together. Okay, that's our, our main car. And these tabs are what's going to hold it in place. Okay, so you can actually, probably don't want to flare them out just yet because we still need to get it in there. No, well, you could just do it like this, I think. There we go. Okay, so you can see how those tabs now are on the inside. 
we're gonna glue those to the inside of our structure here. And that's gonna kind of connect these two pieces together. So I think the best thing to do is start right on the top. Okay, this is the bottom, this is the top. Okay, and we're gonna put glue on just this one tab here to get everything nice and anchored. Just focus on that one to get it nice and centered so it doesn't move. So just kind of shove that in there. And this is the tab here that we put our glue on. Line it up with this flat part here and just press and hold that to the inside of the structure and give that a second to set. Okay, take a look from the inside. You can see that one tab is now holding this whole thing in place. Now it's just a matter of us getting the rest of those tabs glued down. So um, from the inside, you can go from the underside, whatever's easier. Um, I'm gonna start with the two tabs here that are right next to the one that we just glued. I'm gonna flip them in for a second, just like that. And let me see if I can do this. Oops, I just ripped it off. I have to re-glue that. I was looking at the little video monitor while I was doing that and I wasn't completely paying attention, so don't do that. Don't watch TV <laughs> while you're crafting, obviously it's not helpful. So I'm just gonna re-glue that. And there's a mistake that I'm not gonna edit out, just so you can see that I too make mistakes. And I, I have a little monitor over here that I was looking at and I wasn't looking at this. Even though I could see what I was doing, it still isn't really the same thing as actually paying attention to what you're doing, okay? So anyway, back to where I was here before I mess this up. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue, just one little dot on this tab here and then this tab here, you can see that there's glue there. And then I'm gonna flip them over onto the inside. I'm gonna hold it from up here though. And you also wanna make sure that it's nice and flush up against the little cutout for that section so that it's you know um, kind of lined up with the very edge of that little cut that's in there. What are you doing, glue bottle? The glue bottle's got a mind of its own right now. Okay. So you can see what that looks like from the front now. Everything is nice and up against the little cutout, nice and flush. Okay, so now I've got those two down. I've got one more here. I'm gonna flip that in, put one little drop of glue on there. And you know what, there's also, <clears throat> there's one more little tab here. I may as well just get both of those in place. There's two tabs there. And then there's also, of course, two tabs here. And so we've got four more tabs to glue to the inside of the structure. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. Just one little dot. One little dot will do. There we go. All right, so you can see there's glue there, 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 and there. And then we're just gonna fold those over onto the inside of the structure. I'm gonna actually just kind of look at it from the outside while I use my fingers to kind of see on the inside. And there's my other tab there. And then moving on over here to these last two tabs on this side. And then this last one right here. And there we go. Okay. So that is all in place. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Engine is... Uh, pretty much set. All right, now I have this little piece that kind of looks like a key. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna kind of use this to keep everything in place so that we can put a bottom on this thing. Okay, so we can flip these tabs out just to get it in there. So just pop it in, okay, and then kind of let it fall. You can see that it's just kind of creating a, um, kind of like, a, I, I call it a skeleton for this piece. Okay, and what I wanna do first, because I, I want this to be at a 90 degree angle here, I'm gonna put glue on these tabs first. So don't worry about getting glue all the way out to the edges on these. Put glue on those tabs first, bring this up, and just push that up against this little skeleton piece. 
make sure it's nice and flush up against that skeleton piece so that we can keep a nice 90 degree angle here. Okay, and just press and hold that in place for a moment. Same with this one. Just push that in, hold that down, make sure that it's nice and flush up against that structure there. And there we go. You can flip these tabs out for a second so we can get our glue on them. <clears throat> and we don't need to we don't need to cake this with a bunch of glue. It's more just a structural thing so it all stays in place for when we put the bottom on. Okay, so I've got three, got the three tabs on there and we're gonna fold it over and glue it to this little skeleton piece. Okay, and it doesn't have to be like perfect. It's just to kind of keep everything together. Okay, and then we've got this one on the front. Just fold that over. If you need to, grab a dowel to go underneath and hold that in place, just like that. Okay, so we've got this, 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 and these tabs done. Now we can just flip these out to get our glue on these three tabs. Come on, tabs. There we go. Again, this is all gonna be sitting on the platform. Doesn't have to look perfect, it just needs to be nice and flat so that we can put the bottom on. There we go, just kind of glue that to that. Push this down onto that. And this one onto this one. Okay, now everything is nice and uniform, sitting nice and flat so that we can ultimately put this on the bottom and close it up just like this. And you can see how perfect that fits. And if it's a smidge off, you don't need to really worry about it because ultimately it's gonna be sitting on our platform. You're not even gonna see it. So let's just get it on there. So we can call it a day with this thing. We can put some embellishments on it. Okay, and then we just need to build a roof and kind of decorate the front of the engine. All right, so I'm gonna pull this glue out to the very edges here. Right there, right there, like that. And let's put our bottom on. I would start with the large part here. Just make sure that that's nice and flush and aligned nicely, and then just kind of follow it out to the main engine part. You can put this down on your surface if you need to. From here, you can push down with a little dowel, get that nice and set, and that looks good. Okay, so there we have that. Uh, let me move the roof pieces out of the way so we can finish up this guy here. Let's put this piece on first. Okay, so this is, um, in my case, I'm using gold foil. And let me make sure that you figure out where the center of this is. Okay, this is the center. And you've got one, two full segments and then like a half segment. Here's the center, one, two full segments and a half segment. I'm gonna glue on the center of this first just to kind of anchor it and make sure that it's sitting nice and pretty. I wanna get it right out to the very edge here. And get that right there. Press and hold that in place for a moment. Let that set, okay? And then once that's anchored, and actually while it's still kind of setting, you can kind of fold this over and start applying glue to the next few sections here. You'll probably go all the way down to the edge, to the very end, I should say. But make sure that you do get glue all the way out to the very tip of that edge piece so it doesn't come flying loose. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna hit that with my finger a few times. Make sure I don't get any spillage. And then just kind of wrap it around right up flush the very edge of our little engine part of our main car. Okay, there you go, just like that. Okay, and I can kind of hold that with one finger, hold the center still. The center should be pretty dry by now, but just in case it isn't, since I am using foil. Let's get our glue on this section here. And I'm just gonna kind of flatten that out with my finger. Just kind of dab the very end there. And just one section at a time, 
just bring it over, make sure it's nice and flush there with the very edge and press that down into place and just hold that for a sec. Here we go. Okay, now we can put our little, in my case, pink piece. This is a, a little overlay that's gonna go right on the front of our little steam engine thingy. <laughs> Should have probably read up on the different parts of the train before I put one together, but hey. Hindsight is 2020. Okay, so just get that centered right on the front. Kind of line it up with the little gold parts that we just put on there. Make sure that that is kind of touching it. Yeah, it's pretty spot on. There we go. Okay, and now this little piece here that maybe you thought was supposed to be a wheel, which is basically the front of it. So let's get our glue on that. Oh boy. Jeez, mister. We'll pop that into place. You know, it's funny, I'm working on a train. Uh, my girlfriend just bought tickets to ride the Polar Express. I think that's a Tom Hanks film. I don't know that I've ever even watched it fully, uh, but that should be interesting. Okay, so anyway, uh, go ahead and get this centered on there. There's some markers on here. Those markers actually help, uh, or where you want to align them is on the little top part of the little teardrop uh, cutout of the center of this thing. So you want those to kind of align with that. Okay, so there you go. That's how that should look. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this panel, this little overlay, and just kind of like we did with the front, that's gonna go in the back. Make sure you find the center of it so we can glue the center down first and get that anchored. You can see there's the center, one, two, and then kind of a half on the bottom. So make sure you find the center. And let's get our glue on the center part so that we can anchor that so that the rest of it is kind of a breeze. And when you lay this down, kind of push it back as far as it goes so it's nice and flush with, in my case, the little um, striped pattern that I have back there. And just press and hold that down for a moment, let it set, especially if you're using glitter, or I'm sorry, foil in my case. Okay, so actually while I'm holding that down, you can flare out the remaining three sections and just get my glue on them. And this uh, foil paper sometimes is, doesn't play as nice as AC cardstock, but it sure does look nice. Okay, so then you just wanna wrap that down around and bring it all the way down to the base there. So it looks like that. Look at that. It's all in the details. Okay, and then you can go ahead and put glue on the remaining three sections for the other side. Make sure you get that glue out to the very edge there on the other side so that doesn't come down or come off. Try to kind of nudge it up against, up against the, uh, the little sitting area, up against that striped paper, like I said. And there you go. So that's what that should look like. <clears throat> and then we have uh, a nice little gold piece that's gonna go in the center, which is this piece here, okay? So kind of just like we did the front and the back same concept here. We're going to begin by anchoring the center. So we've got the center, one, two, and then like a half. Center, one, two, and a half. Grab the center one. Let's get that anchored first. Got a lot of surface area here to do all the gripping and holding. And there's no marker for this. <clears throat> Just do your best to get it centered. And I think that is pretty spot on. Let me just hold that in place for a minute. It's gonna take me about an actual minute because it's the foil and that's okay. I'm gonna hold that in place. I'm gonna flip this over and out so I can start applying my glue. 
so y'all don't get bored and leave me. You're like, I can't watch Leo hold this forever. I gotta move on here, guys. All right, and again, make sure you get some glue out to the very edge of that last section there so that when we get that in place, it doesn't come pulling away. Okay, and then just kind of caress that, smooth it onto the surface there, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna try to hold all these sections now. I'm gonna flare this out. I'm gonna flare this out, get my glue on this section. Get it all the way out to the edge, just like that. And just kind of smooth that on. I don't know why I get all weird and say caress. <laughs> there we go. That looks about right. Nice. Okay. All right, so that's that. <clears throat> and then um, we do have uh, one more little overlay piece. And... I've got one more little red piece and oh, okay I see where that goes okay and I've got this little pink piece that's actually gonna go on top of this piece like that and I did a bad job folding there it's not sitting flat there we go so just like we did a bunch of times now just make sure you find the center okay so we've got the center one two and then like a half center one two and then another half piece so this is our center Let's get our glue on the center part. So now I'm gluing um, AC cardstock to the foil. And this is where patience is really important. So get that centered onto that center gold piece, well, gold in my case, and press and hold that down. And then you can see how much, how much more fun it is working with AC cardstock as opposed to foil. Plays nice. Okay, and then just wrap that around the rest of the engine. It should match up right there with the little score marks. And hold that down in place on the bottom there. So I'm going to continue holding that and the bottom. I'm going to go over here to the other side, flare that out, get my glue in place, right out to the very edge. There we go, and just kind of wrap that around like that and just hold hold the, the three most important spots in place a little bit longer if you're using the foil just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere okay so of course we need to uh, we're going to need to put um, a couple little chimneys I think they're chimneys I think that's what they call them <laughs> all right so there we have that and uh, let's see, the roof, we got chimneys. It's not bad, we're almost done here. A few more things to go. Okay, so I'm gonna put some chimneys on this thing. And there's a large one and a small one. So these are the main structural pieces. And then we've got a little overlay. This is the larger one, it goes on the larger chimney. And the smaller one for the smaller one. And then there's a little cap, larger one for the larger one, a smaller one for the smaller one. And then we also have a little panel. It's uh, this red piece that I need to fold still. That's gonna go around the larger one just to kind of give it a little bit of an accent and make it look a little different and give it a nice pop of color and contrast. Okay, so uh, these are gonna actually go together the same way uh, aside from the fact that one is taller and wider and the other one is skinnier and shorter, everything else is exactly the same as far as assembly. So all I'm doing right now is just folding everything at the score marks, which I didn't do beforehand. I try to do that to save time so you don't have to watch me do that. And all we need to do to kind of close this up, you'll notice that on the very end of one side we've got a tab <clears throat> and we're going to take our glue and pop it right on that tab. Get that glue out to the edge if you want. I recommend it. You don't have to because you might have to get your fingers a little dirty. And you can do this flat actually. So take the other side and pop it right on top of that tab. Make sure it's nice and centered. You should be able to lay this out flat and press down. 
and then that way you know that you've got it aligned, and then you can kind of squeeze it to create its little form. Okay, and that was pretty much it. And now all we need to do is just close up the top, so we can push these tabs in, and I'm just going to do dots, and then I'm going to hit that with my finger to get it out to the very edges there, just like that. Look at that, there we go. Nice even spread of glue. And then you really are going to need to kind of nudge this around and kind of work it a little bit to get it. And you want to focus on the side opposite of the side that it's hinged. Get that lined up. The rest of it, if you do that, should mostly fall into place. You may have to give it a little bit of a nudge on one side or the other, kind of pushing in there just to get it to line up nicely. And then once you think you've got it, you can kind of, oh, no, I pushed a little bit too hard there. That should do, I'll put it, nope. I'm gonna try that again. And I think I, I thought I figured out a, a method of doing this. I think it was with a box. Yeah, this is too small. Never mind. I'm just talking to myself here, guys. Sorry. All right, let's try this again. Push it down, get it lined up with the side opposite of the side that it's hinged. And then I'm going to apply a nice amount of pressure with my thumb and down here onto that section and then kind of give that a little bit of a nudge if I need to. And actually, this time around, it really played nice. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to move these tabs out of the way. I'm going to use my dowel to really get that, get those tabs to stick nicely. Okay, and there we go. Got a nice top. Looks great. All right, same thing with the bottom. Now that the top's on there, the shape should kind of hold itself without moving around too much. So should have less trouble with this side, which means that we may actually end up making this the top um, and use that as the bottom because this side may actually end up looking better aesthetically. Okay, so again, bring this over, focus on aligning this section here, opposite of the side that is already hinged, and then press that down, and I was pretty much right. This side is gonna look better. So just press that down and hold all those sides down until it's fully set, okay? And there we go. That looks nice. And actually, I just realized that it really doesn't matter because we've got a little cap piece that we're going to put on top of this to really polish it off and clean it up. So that's this piece here. I'm going to go ahead and fold this. And the process of getting this in place is going to be very similar to what we did with the main engine part of our, our main car here. We're going to find the center. Well, this is one, two, three. It's six-sided, so there's not actually a center. But two of these, pick one. Pick either one. One of the one of the ones in the middle. Either one of the two. Just put your put your glue on one of them. Get that glue up to the top if you can. And remember which one you put the glue on. And just press that onto one of the sides. Make sure it's nice and flush with the top. Okay, and then hold that in place for a moment. Let that set. And again, working with this foil, it's kind of a pain. That's okay though. All right, so while I'm holding that, I'm gonna flare out the other two sections here and get my glue on them. And you know, it could be because I'm putting way too much glue on here that it's taking forever to dry. So I'm gonna scrape some of that off. But yeah, that sure does not absorb at all. Okay, and then we're just gonna kinda, kinda lay it right onto the other sections here, just like that. Okay, and while I'm, while I'm holding that, we can flare this out and get glue on the remaining three sections and close this off. Oh boy, oh boy, Leo. Way, way, way too much glue. Okay, there we go. All right, and we're just gonna kind of lay this on the rest of the three sections that I have left here. I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping it nice and flush up at the top. And press that, hold that in place for a moment and see what that's starting to look like. Then of course, put the little cherry on top. 
cap it off. I think I can do that while I'm holding everything else together. Let me clean this tip off. Ew. Okay. Did I want to apply this? All right, so just throw a little bit of glue right on top. Maybe get a little bit out to the edge. I'm going to spread that out right up to the very edge so that when I pop this on there, it's going to look as seamless as it possibly can. And just pop that right on top. Close her up. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. And there we go. <clears throat> okay. Now the large one, large one's going to have this little, this little um, red part. That's going to go about right in the center of the little area that's still green. So find one of the two sections in the middle and just throw a little bit of glue on there just to get it anchored. Now we're back to cardstock on cardstock. Yay. Get it nice and centered. Just like that. I'm going to hold that in place for a moment. And then I could flare the other two sections out. Well, actually, you know what? Let me make sure it's on there before I jump ahead here. Okay, there we go. And I'll get my glue on the remaining two sections there, all the way out to the edge on the one that's uh, right at the end. And just kind of fold that over, holding it there. Last three sections here. And there we go. Well, maybe a little bit more there. Just kind of paint that out to the edge and just roll it on over. Should meet up perfectly on the other end. Okay, so there's our little chimney. Well, that was fun. Okay, so we have our first little chimney built and now we're going to do the same thing with the smaller one. <clears throat> so I'm going to get everything folded at the little score marks here and then it's essentially the same process minus the fact that it's just a tiny bit smaller okay so let's get everything folded we're going to wrap it around connect it make it one solid piece just like we did and then just close up the top and the bottom so again you can see there's one little tab and that is the tab that we're going to apply our glue to Okay, let's get that glue out to the very edge, kind of tack it up a little bit. And again, we can do this flat. Let's line it up first, make sure it's nice and accurate. And then you can literally squeeze this thing flat and press at that little seam that we just created where the two sections connect. There we go. Okay, so there is our little cylinder. And then just like we did, we're going to fold these tabs down and in and just a little dot of glue on each little tab here. And then I'm going to use my finger to get that glue all the way out to the edges, tack it up so that when I pop that down, it almost immediately will hold. So again, this is the hinged portion here. We're going to focus on lining up the side opposite of that hinged section. And then the rest of it should just kind of fall into place. Hold that other opposite side down. Let it hold, let it get a good hold there. It's kind of a small piece. And then once it's, once it's in, in place there, you can grab your dowel and push from the inside. Get that to really stick. And that's pretty good. And actually, let me see if that's... I'm going to be a little more patient here and let that really set before we move on. Okay, and I did not get enough glue on there. Or I hesitated for too long and it just did not hold. I think it has something to do with the lack of humidity in the air here. And, well, I, I am kind of tacking it up a little bit which thins it out, gets more air in there, and it starts to set a lot quicker. But this time I think it's gonna work. So just hold that in place for as long as it takes. And don't let go like I did. Otherwise you might have to do it again. Okay, I think this time it's gonna hold. I'm just gonna be more patient. Okay, 
Yep, there we go. Okay, so now we're just gonna flip this thing over and do the same thing on the other side. Get our glue on these tabs. Hopefully this time I can get it in the first shot. And there we go. And we'll close her up just like that. And just work your finger around the entire perimeter. Make sure that everything is lined up nicely. Give it a good squeeze. Just like that, be patient. And there we go. Okay, so there's our second little chimney thing. Okay, all right. And again, we've got a nice little overlay that's gonna go on top of that just to kind of finish it off and polish it off. So again, there's no actual center here. So pick one of the two in the middle. I'm choosing that one. And you wanna place that right onto this piece here. Just make sure that where the little score marks are, that they line up with the actual structure. And try to get it as flush with the top as you can so that when we put that little cap on, it kind of polishes it off and makes it all look nice and seamless. So you want it to be pretty much at that same, uh, at that the same plane as the top of this green piece, okay? So that you don't really feel one or the other when you kind of run your finger along the top. You want it to be pretty seamless. I guess is the best way to explain it. Okay, now that I've got that one piece anchored, I'm gonna go ahead and close this up on one side. So I'm getting my glue there. Make sure you get some glue out all the way to the edge on that one that's on the very end. And just wrap it around. Make sure it's nice and straight and hold that in place. And then while I'm holding that in place, I may as well get my glue on the remaining three little sections. Make sure you get some glue out to the very edge of that last one so it doesn't come flying off. And just wrap that around like so. And it should meet perfectly with the one that we started with there on the other end. And that looks good. Okay, so just give that a second. I have to spend a few extra moments holding this down because I'm using like a foil, which I've said probably 10 times already. So I apologize for sounding like a broken record, but I do just wanna help you understand why I'm maybe not progressing as fast as I usually do. Okay, so now we're gonna put a little bit of glue right on top. I'm gonna to spread that glue out to the very edges here so that when I put this little cap on, it really holds in all the places it needs to, especially towards the perimeter. And just pop that right on top, line it up as nicely as you can to make it look as seamless as possible. And there we go. Okay. And that looks good. Okay, so we've got our, our two little chimneys or exhausts, whatever you want to call them. I don't know the actual term, but um, okay. So now what we want to do is you'll notice that on this piece here, um, this plaid or, or gingham pattern that I have here, there are some markers to help you with the positioning of these pieces here. It's kind of like a, a V shape. So you wanna get one of these corners here right onto that V shape, okay? The large one's gonna be um, closer to the actual, you know, box. So let's get some glue on the bottom of this. And I'm gonna work that glue out to the edges. I don't want any end of it or any side of it kind of peeling off. And just get that lined up with that little marker there. Make sure it's centered and press and hold that down. Give that a second to set. Okay, and then there's another little marker here for this guy here. So get your glue on the bottom of this guy or gal and line that up with the marker there. Make sure it's centered Press and hold that down for just a moment. Let it kind of get its footing. OK, 
Okay, and there we have it. Now, um, ultimately, what I'm going to do is I've got some, um, let me see here, I have some uh, rhinestones on a band here. I'm going to decorate the top of the little exhaust or chimneys with a little bit of that. And then also, uh, what else are we going to do? Oh, to kind of create the illusion of um, smoke coming out, we're going to take some cotton. And I'm going to do this after everything's put together and after my fingers are don't have a bunch of glue on them. But you can take just a cotton ball and just kind of pull at it to create like the illusion of a little wisp of smoke coming out. That's way too much, obviously. Uh, we're going to go a little bit smaller than that, but uh, it's a cool way to, to kind of create, you know, that illusion of smoke and make it look a little more lifelike. And you can kind of just tug at it and pull at it uh, until you get the desired result, however you want to do it. And I think I'm probably going to cut this in half and make it a little bit smaller. It's kind of kind of maybe twirl it a little bit just to kind of get all that cotton together. And I'm going to work on that a little bit, kind of uh, <laughs> it's kind of not working out right now because my fingers have a bunch of glue on them. Um, but then we're going to just glue that on top there to kind of add a little bit of smoke to it. Okay. So anyway, again, I got to wash my hands before I play with the cotton because they are a little sticky. Um, but anyway, so that's done. And now, um, well, you know what we can do? We can actually take this thing and we can glue this to our, our main platform here. Now, when you glue this down, make sure that the hole is not up in front. You want the hole where we're going to eventually put our little string to join all these in the back. Okay, so we can flip this over and let's get our glue on the white part here. Just like that. And it's okay to go a little heavier here, but work a little bit of glue out to the edges, especially towards the back. Okay, and maybe a little bit up in front just to make sure that all sits nicely. And again, remember the back of this needs to be with where the uh, little hole is for the string. Okay, so just get that nice and centered on your structure. Make sure you have somewhat of an even border all the way around. Okay, just like that. And just press and hold that down for a minute. Let it kind of get a grip. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, and then all we need to do is build the roof for this guy, which we've already done twice. So you guys are pretty much experts at that. And um, we got to put the, the little uh, little part on the front there. Oh, and the wheels. Can't forget the wheels. We're going to do that last once kind of everything is in place. Okay, let's turn this around, see what it looks like from this side. That looks good. Yep, it's coming out nice. Okay, so we're going to let that set for a little bit. And you know what we can do real quick is put the little front end on this. So you've got this piece here. I've already folded everything at the tabs here. And there's going to be a green piece that goes inside. Okay, so that the little grill has a little bit of green coming through it. And to do that, I'm going to place our glue onto this piece and not on this piece because we don't know exactly where to put the glue on that green piece. So we're going to do that. I'm going to apply our glue onto this section here instead. So just work that around the little grill. Just like that. And you can see that one end is curved, one end is flat. Put the flat end up on top like this. The curved end towards the bottom. Make sure that it's within the area where the score marks are and that's how it should look. So we'll press that down into place, okay? And then all that's left to do is take this piece and glue it to itself. And then we've got this tab here that's going to come in and get glued there. So this is going to be fun because this is foil. I'm basically trying to glue plastic to foil. 
So this is going to be an experience here. So get some glue on this tab. And if you're using paper, you're going to have a much easier time with this and it's not going to take as long. I'm going to really have to hold this in place for, I'm not sure, even sure how long. Could be a bit, okay? But line that up nice and straight. Get that lined up with that tab. And give that a press. We'll see how this goes for me. Actually, I'm going to just do this flat without creasing that tab though. I think this is going to work out easier for me if I just do this. I really have to hold this whole thing down for a few moments. So I'm going to probably cut here until this is nice and dry. Okay, I think, I think it's set. So you can see the shape of this. Okay, and all that's left to do then is we have this one little tab here that we need to apply glue to and tuck that behind this long strip here, this long piece, and get that to set. And then we can apply this to the actual train. So we're gonna tuck that behind this piece, get it lined up, and just hold that in place. And again, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to hold this in place for probably like two minutes because of the materials that I'm gluing together here. And I'm probably gonna grab a just any sort of tool, a pencil, something thin to push that up against this piece because I can't really get my finger in there and I don't want to push on it too hard and risk um, pulling it apart. So again, if you're just doing this with cardstock, yours should pretty much already be dry. I literally had to wait about two minutes for this piece to set and you can see that it still didn't even completely set. Uh, and that again is because it's foil on basically the back of the foil piece, which is almost a plastic. So I will be back in about three or four minutes here. Okay, so I'm still not convinced that this is completely dry. So I'm going to leave this alone for a minute, but you can see what it's supposed to look like when it's all done. Okay. I'm really just going to put this aside and let it set before I try to glue it to the front of our structure here and end up ruining it. I don't want to do that. Uh, so put that off to the side. Let's build the roof for our engine here. And I'm just kind of looking at my piece here. And I've got a little part of this window that isn't sitting completely flush. I'm going to throw a little bit of glue under there and press that down into place. Make sure it's flush. So you're more than welcome to, and I highly advise going through and taking a look at your final project, making sure that everything is nice and flush. You can always go back in with a scrap piece of paper, throw some glue on there, stick it in between the two layers to paint a little bit of glue into areas that maybe aren't sitting completely flat and really make this project shine. Okay, so we're left with these two pieces of vellum. And again, depending on uh, your presentation, if you're giving this as a gift and want to uh, keep it nice and clean looking, you can put the, you can sandwich the vellum on the outside between this and this layer. Um, or if you're just using it as a display piece for yourself and no one's really gonna look at it or inside it, uh, you can absolutely put your vellum on the inside of the roof. It's not gonna hurt anything either way the end result from the outside is gonna look the same. Okay, so I'm getting my glue here, putting my vellum on the inside, because it doesn't matter. And just make sure that you cover up all the cutouts and that you keep it within the confines of where the scored areas are so that this thing will fold nice and easy. All right, so now that the vellum's in, just like we did the first two times, we're gonna start with the little tab here Okay, and we're gonna throw a little bit of glue on that guy and get that connected with its neighbor. Okay, so just fold that under, tuck it underneath behind the other piece that's right next to it and just press and hold that together for a moment and let it set. Just like that. And then we can go over to the other side, grab the other tab. I gotta tuck that underneath though. Can move that out of the way. Get our glue on this guy here. 
And just kind of spread that out to the edge if you can. And tuck it behind this piece here. Make sure you get it nice and lined up as accurately as you can. There we go. And then that's that's holding nicely. Then we've got two tabs on each side here so we can close this little part up. And did I do that right? That doesn't look folded correctly. Yeah, it didn't fold very well. I'm gonna try to redo that. There we go. Much better. And just throw a bit of glue on that. And then I'm gonna just do the other one as well. Spread that glue out to the edges. And let's close it up. Just get it nice and aligned with that tab there. And just give that a squeeze. And then go on over to the other side and give that a squeeze. Okay, and then other side, same thing. Get your glue. On the remaining two tabs, just kind of tack them up a little bit, dab them, and bring that piece down, get it lined up, give it a squeeze, and close it up on the other end, like that. And there we go, okay. So, that just leaves three more pieces to finish this up, just like we did the first two times. There's only two, two of these left, so we know where it goes. Okay, let's get our glue. We're gonna ignore the little tabs on the side, and we're gonna put our glue on the main face of this. My phone has been going crazy today. I think people are getting excited for the new release. Okay, all right, so what we wanna do is match it up with the point there where the two sides meet. Make sure that that is in place and then just kind of run your finger along the edges here and make sure that that's nice and lined up as well. Like that and then kind of squeeze it like you're making a pie crust. And make sure that these tabs go over nicely, they do. And there we go. Okay, give that a second to set. And while you're kind of still applying pressure there, you can head on over to these little tabs here. Throw a little bit of glue on there. You don't have to go all the way down, just up to this point here on this little tab, and then fold it over and give that a press. Okay, and then other side, same thing. Throw a little bit of glue on that tab and fold it over onto this side. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that looks that looks really good as far as the positioning. And that just leaves this guy here. Last little icicle slash drift piece. Get your glue on there. Make sure you work that glue up to the edge there. There we go. And I'm going to probably just kind of work it out like that, make it nice and thin, line it up with the little peak of the roof, make sure that's in place, kind of run your finger along this edge, make sure that that is all nice and lined up, same with the other side, there we go, I need to nudge that up a little bit, there we go, and there we go. And then just keep applying pressure up and down this piece here. Make sure that everything's making good contact. Just like that. And this side, <clears throat> look at that. 
that side drying up on me. So I'm just gonna use my scrap piece of paper and paint a little extra glue on this section here. And press that down into place. So that's what happens. Sometimes you've got a lot of surface area to cover with glue. You got a lot of little areas where you need to apply pressure and it's impossible unless you're an octopus. And even if you were an octopus, I don't know if octopus, if octopi craft. Um, but it's, you know, don't, uh, don't beat yourself up if you can't get it right. There's always ways to go back in and tidy things up. And it's not really broken, so we're not fixing it. We're just getting it done uh, using a different method that sometimes is necessary because, well, especially in this case, because we're, you know, I've got the, um, it's not cardstock on cardstock. It's, uh, well, this is glitter. I don't think this side, I'm going to, I think this is the other tab. I don't remember. This tab didn't really stick. And that's what happens sometimes when you're, when you're using materials other than cardstock. Sometimes they just, they just don't want to play nice. Okay, so we're getting these tabs nice and glued down. Just fold that over and press. Give that a second to set. Or in my case, maybe 15 seconds. There we go. And then all that's left to do here is put this down like so. Okay, so nothing new here. And just like we did the first two times, uh, I'm going to focus on just this section here. We'll do the little snow drifts um, after we get this part down. So I'm gonna think ahead here and fold these out so that they're easier to glue later. And we're gonna apply our glue onto our little overlay for the roof. And working that glue out to the very edges. So when I put this down, Everything's going to be nice and seamless when we connect it with the, the front and the back that we just put into place. Okay, so again, start by just kind of dropping this onto the peak of the roof. Make sure it's centered. Make sure it's sitting on that peak nicely and then just kind of nice and easy. Just press it down into place and hold it down at the bottoms there. There we go. Make sure it's making good contact all the way up and down. And there we go. Okay. And then we just need to glue the little snow drift icicles into place. Our roof is done. We're going to put the little front end on our train and then we'll add our wheels. And then you can string it together however you want using whatever cord, string, baker's twine, whatever it is you want to use. Okay, so there's our roof. That looks great. And now we just need to close it up. So throw some glue on there and then make sure that you get some glue out to the very edges of these little end cap icicles, we'll call them, and fold that up onto that side there. Just kind of press it down here in the center and then right along the edge. You wanna probably, if you're using glitter like I am, be patient so that everything looks nice and crisp and connected. Otherwise, you're gonna have little stray bits kinda of hanging off and not looking so polished and, and pretty, as pretty as it can be. Don't aim for perfection because there's so many, so many variables here. You know, I mentioned this a lot actually, and, you know, how your machine cuts, how things are folded, how things are scored. And there's just so many things that play into how this is going to look when all said and done. As long as you're, you know, somewhat close, I think the overall is going to look great. I'm very happy with how mine's coming out and taking my time. And, you know, this is my first time putting it together, just like you. Obviously, I have a, a prototype here in front of me that helps so I can kind of see how it works and how to put it together. But, you know, if I can do this my first time without ever trying it off camera, 
you should absolutely be able to do it. Okay, so I just put the glue on the remaining little drifts slash icicles, and I'm focusing on making sure that these little end pieces are making good contact and that they're in place like so. Okay, and there we go. There's our beautiful little roof for our main, our main um, engine. All right, so here's this piece that took forever to dry. And what we're gonna do, let me take this off for a second. Um, I didn't get that on right yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece, we're gonna put glue on the back of this and simply just glue it to the front like so. Okay, so it looks like that. So let's do that. Now again, this is, um, this is actually being glued to cardstock, so it shouldn't be as bad. But I'm gonna work that glue up to the very top. I want that top to look nice and seamless. Okay, so you could probably just leave it on your surface. Get that nice and lined up with the main structure there. Get it centered, nice and flush. And come on. There we go. I think that looks about right. And then we'll press that into place and just kind of hold it. Again, I'm gonna to need to be a little more patient here because of the type of paper I'm using, but you can see what that's starting to look like. And I think it's probably best if I just kind of lean it on its side. And then, you know, if you see that maybe you could have had a little bit more glue there in this little section to get this a little more flush, just paint a little bit of glue in that little area and then give that a little squeeze and make sure that that is making good contact for you there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this off to the side and let it really dry. And actually, I'm gonna have to hold it while it dries. And then all that's left to do is string these together. Now, obviously, as always, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna spend some time adding some rhinestones, um, mostly rhinestones and pearls in various little areas like uh, around the windows, around the main section here of the engine. Uh, and then, yeah, just some rhinestones. And then of course, don't forget the little smoke. Just literally just glue that, glue the cotton to that kind of coming out. You can see how cool that's gonna look. That's a little bit too much, but you get the idea. And then of course, uh, we're gonna use, I'm gonna use this, um, this gold, uh, I think this is called a rat tail cording if you want to Google it. Okay. All right, so that's going off to the side for a second. And uh, let's see, let's get our wheels out. I got a bunch of wheels here sitting underneath my mat. And it's time to start applying our wheels. We'll start with cart two and three while our main engine works on uh, getting all dry and set with that little front end that we just put on. Okay, so uh, this is cart number three. I'm gonna take the roof off for now. And you'll notice that on the sides here, this is the side, this is the front, this is the back. Uh, well, actually, this is the front. This, it doesn't really matter though. These are the sides, and these are the sides that the wheels are gonna go on. Now remember, there's a little T on here, and then to the left and right of the T are some little markers to help you with the positioning of these wheels. So the top of the wheels are gonna be flush with the structure, the actual platform, okay? And then try to squeeze those in between those markers. So what we wanna do to get these to stick is I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue pretty much right on the T and then over to the left and to the right a little bit, but within the little guidelines of those little markers. It's probably all the glue we'll need to get it to stick. And then just kinda position it uh, on here and make sure that the top of the wheel is flush with the top of the platform that our little house is sitting on. Okay, and make sure it's centered. Give that a squeeze, just like that. Okay, so there you have it. And then again, there are two more little markers here. You just put a little bit of glue between those two markers. 
and press that into place. Doesn't matter what the orientation of the wheels are. You can keep them like symmetrical. I think it's probably a little more realistic if they're kind of not, you know, twisted the same way as far as the little gold piece there. But that is, I think, getting a little too detailed here for what we're making. Okay, so we can flip that over, push down from the inside. You can actually get your fingers in there, get that to really, really stick. And then same thing here. Um, you've got two markers uh, to the left and right of the T. So put some glue right on that T, and then a little bit to the left and to the right. That should do. And pop this right in between those markers, and also make sure that the top of the wheel is flush with the platform. Just like that, give that a squeeze. And moving along here, there's two more markers here for this wheel. Keep the glue within the confines of those markers. Pop your wheel in place, make sure it's flush with the platform for the house, or the box, I should say. There we go. Now, I would not put this down on the ground just yet. I'd let these really set, push, and push down from the inside here. You can see I'm just kind of pushing down where I put the glue, making sure that everything is adhering nicely. Now, I'll put that off to the side. I'm gonna grab cart number two. And same thing here, same wheels. Should have four wheels left, they're the same shape. And we're gonna place our glue basically on the T, okay? And then to the left and to the right a little bit, keep it within the confines of those little markers. And again, this is gonna be nice and flush with the top of the platform. Keep it in between the little markers there. Now we did that just so that, you know, everything looks nice and symmetrical and it's, uh, it's going to look more professional because I don't know if you want to ride a train where the wheels are all out of place. <laughs> I don't know if I'd get on that train. Okay, so again, keep it within the confines of the little markers, nice and flush at the top. And then also, obviously, you know, we're doing this for you so that uh, it sits nice and flat too. Last thing you want is for it to, you know, be all uh, cockeyed kinda, I guess, for lack of a better description. Okay, same thing on this side. There's a little T there. Start with the glue on the T. Bring it over to the left and to the right a bit. That should be plenty. And place this within the little markers, nice and flush. The top of that wheel flush with the platform. And there you go. And where's my last wheel? There it is. This one here, just get that glue within the areas for the markers. Kind of visualize a circle there so you don't put it too out, out too far, left or right. There we go. Keep it there, nice and flush with the top. Give that a squeeze. I'm gonna press down here real quick and then flip this over. Press down from the inside. <clears throat> there we go. Got that, okay. Let that set, don't, don't put that uh, on, its, on its wheels just yet. And now, for the last little step here. So you'll notice that on this train here, we've got markers that show you how high and where exactly to place the wheels, okay. So what I would do is I would just keep the glue within the confines of these little markers here for these, for this set of wheels. Wouldn't go too far up. Okay, and just follow the little guides there. These are not gonna be flush with the platform, so make sure that you don't go above the little markers there on the, uh, the panel there. Okay, so that looks good. And then this, this wheel here, this wheel is actually going to extend above the platform. Uh, there's a little F here. On this side, it's a backwards F. So we can actually bring our glue up to about there, like that. I think that's fine. And then again, just kind of take a look at the little guides there and try to match that up with where the guides are, just like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna flip this over 
and just press down from the inside to get those to really gel together. And that just leaves this section here. This one has the letter F in the correct orientation. Throw some glue on that and just follow the little guides there. They won't disappoint you. They will guide you to a successful placement of the wheel. Okay, and that just leaves, there's another set of guides here for the remaining pair of wheels. Keep your glue within those confines. Place it on there within the area where the markers are. And as long as they're somewhat on the same plane, they're gonna be in good shape. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over, press down, and that, my friends, my crafty, crafty pals, is pretty much it. Um, I'll show you here the prototype. This is the one that I look at while I'm building it, and you can see, you can see how the string is just tied. You just run a little bit of string in through the hole, tie it in a, a little knot, and you can decide how long you want it to be. I think that's cute. Maybe, um, yeah, that's about right. So that measures out to about two inches, roughly. Uh, yeah, so maybe cut out maybe four inches and tie it. Make sure that it's about two inches in between each cart and the main engine, okay? And then, like I said, take a look at um, the final photos uh, to see where else we added some embellishments. Uh, I can tell you right now, you know, there's going to be some rhinestones here. We'll probably add some liquid pearls here. Just anywhere you want to add a little extra bling to really um, deck this thing out, you're welcome to do that. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, so anyway, I know this one's going to be a hit, and I can't wait to see your version with your papers. Uh, with your embellishments and whatever else you decide to do with it. So if you do make this or any of the new projects from our new bundle, I'd love to see them. And so would the rest of our community. So visit us in the official group on Facebook by heading over to your Facebook search and searching for Dreaming Tree Group. Um, so join myself and the 16,000 plus other dreamers uh, that inspire us daily. And also, if you enjoyed crafting with me and love our tutorials, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Um, that is, um, I, I just love watching it grow. That's very special to me. So if you enjoy the videos, please take a moment and do that. But anyway, uh, if I don't, well, there may be one more release before Christmas, but if I don't see you or don't talk to you, I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas, um, uh, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, uh, whatever it is you celebrate. I hope it's joyous, memorable, and uh, you have a good time. So again, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to crafting with you again.